They promised me, okay, now it's working. Okay, um, good evening, everyone. First of all, uh, your excellencies, dear friends and guests, thank you for uh, joining us today, and I'm honored to be here with you today. And before I start, I'd like to say that it's always exciting to go back to uh, physical gatherings and interacting with, with human beings on a physical basis. Uh, for the past year and a half, it was quite challenging, but uh, we're thankfully now seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, so I'm extremely we are all extremely happy and optimistic about it, and I hope that everyone else is enjoying Expo, enjoying Dubai, and enjoying the UAE. Uh, first of all, even though I killed a minute already, I've been given the mission impossible of speaking for three minutes only, and with hearing the amazing discussion, I feel like I want to tap into uh, women empowerment, I want to tap into uh, climate change, I want to tap into the future of education. But I don't think I have the time to, but the good news is I have my colleague, uh, Sarah Biljafli here, She's an amazing uh, colleague of mine at DFF, so feel free to speak to her once the session is over, and I'm sure we'll have follow-on discussions, inshallah. Um, maybe a couple of takeaways before my time runs out. Obviously, if we, when we talk about uh, education, and clearly from what you've heard from the previous speakers, uh, the sky's the limit on how much we can grow when it comes to education, whether it being uh, undergrad, grad, or high school. Back in our days, maybe in order to uh, reach education, you need to be in a proper school or you need to be in front of a proper uh, uh, professor or a highly qualified professor. When you think about it at the moment, with the press of a button, you can access the best professor or teacher from around the world. So I think if we leverage on technology in the right way, we can really access the best education regionally and globally through the digital platforms. So um, this is something extremely important that using the tools of technology, and I'll come to and I'll wrap up maybe by talking about the pros and cons of technology, but definitely the access to proper education, leveraging on technology is there. We can easily access the high quality MIT, Harvard level uh, 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 education while we're sitting on our desktop here. This did not exist in the past. It's just a matter of how we can leverage on the technology. We've done this in the Dubai Future Foundation with the support of different stakeholders to ensure that we create a seamless educational journey. But in order to do that, you need an agile government. And that's one big message for the rest of the world. We need agile governments to work together because amending policies and amending educational policies cannot work unless you have governments and policies that adapt to that quick change. And this is not only for education, this is for 3D printing, this is for uh, autonomous mobility, this is for blockchain, for AI. You need to have uh, proper policy change and agility, and thankfully here in the UAE, we have the push and the belief from leaders to give us the opportunity to test. And when we test, it doesn't mean that we're gonna succeed every time, we will fail. But this is the beauty of uh, having the luxury to make mistakes. This is how entrepreneurs pivot. This is how they succeed. Um, and this is how His Highness Sheikh Mohammed works. He bets on, uh, on, uh, on his team. He accepts mistakes, but those mistakes makes leaders. And that's how we work. And I think even in the education sector, we need to try things in a confined manner to ensure that we are pioneers in, in assessing that sector. And then we learn from our mistakes and we go. So that's uh, point number one, which is um, agility. It's extremely important. And I know my time ran away, so I'll leave you with maybe one last message. Technology is definitely uh, a key component. AI is definitely a key uh, component of the future. EdTech is a key component uh, of the future. But the most important component of the past of the present and of the future is the human being. And we need to make sure that we really preserve all the strengths of human beings. Focusing on screen time and technology on an extensive manner is not a positive thing. As we, as we walk through uh, neighborhoods at the moment, we have to be even realistic. And uh, as we walk through neighborhoods sometimes, we sometimes tend to miss those kids that walk around the neighborhoods and they do sports and they move around because we feel like the future generation is heavily focused on technology. Major uh, uh, thinking needs to happen over there because the human being and the soft skills that have been discussed in the previous panel are a key component and what has also been uh, presented in the previous panel that 
human beings need to, uh, and it's inevitable that human beings will adapt to the change uh, and the leverage of technology. So we need to embrace it, we need to adapt to new technology, and we need to create the policies, the right policies around uh, technologies. And the same applies on, on, on ed tech, on health, uh, health tech, on telemedicine, on connecting with doctors, and so on and so forth. So um, let's not forget that the core component of this life is a human being. Let's not, uh, let's not forget that the physical interaction is important. Let's not forget that the connectivity between us as individuals is important. Let's not forget the soft skills. Let's not forget our health and well-being and our physical activity extremely important because if we have the right balance, then we will have a safer future that will be heavily uh, related to technology, but driven by the human being. Thank you very much.